Ghosl, taking a bath, something which we do every day. But if you think about it, it's a pretty important part of your religion. Because if you are not ritually pure, you cannot perform some important religious deeds. And how much time and effort you put into learning the correct manner of ghusl and how consciously and how well you perform the ghusl shows your concern for the way you stand before Allah. Because al-ghusl amana bayna al-abdi wa bayna rabbihi Ghusl is a trust between you and your Rabb. And we really can't emphasize the importance of ghusl enough. In this series, we will begin the discussion with the obligatory ghusl, which will be helpful to you when you are in a hurry or if there is not enough time to take a complete ghusl. Next, I will take you step by step through the etiquettes of the complete ghusl, where we will discuss the sunnah acts of ghusl. And finally, in the next video, we will answer some frequently asked questions about ghusl. Alhamdulillah, all the information and answers are taken from the writings and fatawa of the scholars. So let's begin. There are two kinds of ritual impurities, the minor impurity and the major impurity, which occurs as a result of janaba, haid or nifas. To achieve tahara from the minor impurity, you only need to renew your wudu, ablution, whereas in the case of major impurity, you need to take a ghusl. And ghusl can be taken in two ways. A complete ghusl with all the sunnahs of the Prophet and a partial or a sufficient ghusl, which means only doing what is obligatory to free yourself from the ritual impurity. So what are these obligatory acts of ghusl? A beforehand niya, intention, that you are taking this bath to purify yourself from the major ritual impurity, rinsing your mouth and nose and letting water run over your entire body at least once. Make sure it reaches every part of it, even your scalp under the thick hair. If you manage to do this much, then you have purified yourself from the major ritual impurity. As for the complete ghusl, and this is the mustahab one, and it is how the Prophet wasallam took a bath. And this is how you do it. Begin with an intention to purify yourself from the major impurity. Then say Bismillah. Wash your hands three times. Then with your left hand, wash your private parts. And anywhere else that is contaminated with traces of impurity. Then make a complete wudu, just as you would for prayers. Then pour water over your head three times, rubbing and making sure that it thoroughly reaches your scalp. Some scholars said three times means once on the right, next on the left and then in the center. And then pour water and wash the entire body, beginning with the right side, then the left, while rubbing it with your hands so that you are sure you haven't missed any part. So these are the etiquettes of the complete ghusl. Ghusl essentially means letting water run over every part of your body. So if you are wearing a ring, you should move it. And if it is so tight that the water won't reach the skin underneath, then you have to remove it. Cosmetic items which form a barrier and prevent the water from reaching your skin must also be taken off. In a narration of Maimuna radiallahu ta'ala anha, it is mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam moved away from the spot where he had been taking ghusl and then he washed his feet. Sheikh Ibn al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah explained that what is apparent from the various narrations is that the Prophet washed his feet after ghusl only when there was a need. Like if the floor is made of dirt and if the feet are not washed, they will remain soiled. So you may want to wash your feet after ghusl if there is a need. 